the captains, and it's a general one. Um, just your general thoughts about kind of, uh, you know, rejoining the Big East, you know, those historical rivals that you've heard about but not experienced, um, and the opportunity to, to play Big East baseball now. Yeah, I can start us off. Um, I think it's I think it's really exciting. I think it's really exciting, especially when you talk about the uh, those rivalries, right? Those rivalries that we also know from basketball and from other sports that kind of go back decades. I think that's gonna be really exciting. I think there's also a cool aspect about staying in the Northeast a lot of the times and kind of claiming that territory. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a really cool experience. It's obviously something me. And Christian haven't experienced before, even though we've been here for a while. And uh, I could pass it off to Christian. What do you think? Yeah, I think going off of Chris, I think it's going to be really cool to be able to renew those Big East rivalries that we've heard so much about. Um, hearing from guys early on, like even Coach Penders played in the Big East, and he still keeps his Big East conference trophy in his um, office and stuff. And I've heard so many good things about the conference that I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity. And, you know, we get to play at Creighton too, which is in Omaha, which is kind of sick. Yep. <laughs> so there's like a bunch of cool little nuances about the Big East. Um, I remember playing some of those teams my freshman year. Like, for instance, we played St. John's, I remember, my freshman year. And there was like – it was a really, really tough series, and it was a lot of fun. So I specifically remember that series playing a Big East team. But I'm, uh, I'm pumped to go in the Big East. Gavin, you had your, your hand up. Feel free, fire away. This is for Chris. Uh, how much better prepared do you think you guys are for the season having Elliott Park to work out in, uh, you know, the past couple months? Hey, Gavin. I think it's been an unreal asset. Um, I could probably barely count on two hands the amount of days where due to rain or snow, if we were playing on J.O. Christian, we would have been inside. And the amount that we can do inside, we could do a lot inside, but it really doesn't compare to what we can get, get done on on a, on a real field. And also, not just the field, but the new facilities, five batting cages over two, is it's – we are – I would say we're more prepared for this year than we've, we've ever been before, just for the purposes of facility-wise. Thanks. Uh, I'll go next. Um, ben, this one's for you. Um, so like, uh, like Chris said, you know, you're going to kind of be leaned on to be the ace this year. Um, how excited are you for that challenge? Just knowing the history, especially recent history of aces at UConn going on to the, to the next level. Yeah. Um, thank you. I mean, it's definitely an honor. Um, and you know, our pitching staff, you know, we're, we're led by coach Mac and he's, he's the best in the business. I mean, there's not a single thing I think anybody could say poorly about him. Um, and it's fun playing for him. It's fun coach or playing for a coach who's so invested in us. And, um, it's a true honor. I'm really excited about it. And Friday or Saturday couldn't come soon enough. So can't wait. Uh, this Ben too, what did you learn last year from sitting out that you think you're really excited to utilize this season, being able to play for your first time in two yep. years? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think one of the special things during quarantine is obviously it was pretty unfortunate for, you know, not me, but for the guys, just the season getting short and, um, but it was kind of a period to where I was on my own for the most part. And I kind of got to see, you know, week to week, what it looks like getting ready for every start and just figuring out, you know, there's stuff that needs to be, do be done every single day and stuff in order to get my body right. And kind of just like my, my nutrition and everything around that. So I'm excited to get like going and rolling towards the season. Um, and I think really the last year has helped like kind of get everybody prepared for taking on those roles and, you know, just being more mature in those, in those instances away from the coaches or away from other guys and just doing what needs to be done to be ready and stay ready. What are some examples of those, that you, those things that you have done to stay ready for this moment? Yeah, I just think um, like in the weight room, I, I got with a really good trainer over the past year um, and a lot of the, the weightlifting and, and kind of mobility work has shifted towards pitching completely rather than on both sides of the ball this year. Um, and I think just I, really hunkering down on recovery. Um, it was something that as a two way, like my arm was probably a little bit more conditioned naturally just throwing with the infielders and then tra translating it to the mound. So 
this was one of the first times too, where I've really got to regiment my throwing throughout a course of the week and leading up to the season. So I'm really excited about that. Luke. You're on mute, Luke. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Um, so first off, Luke from uh, the UConn blog. Nice to meet you. Meet you. What does it mean to uh, rep UConn, flagship university of the state, as someone who was Gatorade, Gatorade Player of the Year at UConn and uh, was one of the best pitchers in Connecticut in high school ball for a while? Yeah, um, I think it's really cool. I, obviously, like I attended UNC my first two years, um, and there was just something about coming back to, you know, Connecticut and being in the Northeast. And I, I, I remember my visit. It was in, I think it was in like mid June or early June at the time, and I kind of just fell in love with this place uh, right when I got here. And I think the first thing I noticed was when we came, when I came into the the weight room with Coach Horgan and Coach Penders. Um, everybody just looked like they were having fun in the weight room. And obviously they were 50 games into the season. So something that was kind of new to me in terms of like the energy level and what I was seeing. So honestly, it's been great to be back closer to home too. And obviously I, I had bonds with almost all the guys and the majority of the team before even like stepping foot on campus. So it's been a really fun last two years and I'm excited to see, you know, what we can do this year. Now with the kind of extended season this year, uh, 60, 60 ish games instead of the usual 50, uh, mid fifties games. Uh, now do you think that'll mean more starts for you or is it going to be more shifted towards some of the back end guys or how will you guys as a staff kind of manage that? Do you think? Yeah, I think we're lucky this year too. Um, I mean, we're really deep. It's going to be like, uh, I like the coaches have been saying the past couple of days, like this might be, this is the first time they've had this or the most guys they've ever had to keep home. Um, and they're all, and they're all, they're going to be a bunch of guys who are, who are contending for bids to pitch on the weekend or be a mid midweek starter. So everybody's ready. I think we're, we're lucky in terms of having Caleb in the back of the bullpen, Reggie in the back of the bullpen, uh, Andrew Marrero in the back of the bullpen. So like, we're going to have assurance for really the entire game. And it's going to help us a lot too, if we're playing four game series. So I know we're all looking forward to that, especially coach Mack. Thank you. Yep. Gavin, did you have another? Yes, I did. It's for uh, Kyler, uh, you guys obviously have big expectations. With, you know, your preseason favorite. How are you kind of going to deal with the expectations this year? Hey, Gavin. Thank you. Um, you know what? It's just like it's just like come come and do your job every day. It's it's not really an individual thing. Like with all these awards coming out, I mean, it's easy to like lose sight of like the team and like the bonds that we have as like a, a community. So it's, it's more just like staying together, doing our thing and just, just doing what we know best. So I would say it's not really like, it's not really like a pressure coming to a new conference and like being the favorite. It's kind of just like do what we know how to do and everyone do their job. Having last season cut short, does it make start of the season you more excited than ever for the season? Absolutely. I mean, the season cutting short last year, I mean, we were, we were off to such a hard, hot start. I mean, especially, especially beating Michigan in the way that we did. I mean, we kind of, we handled them pretty good. And like that, that really fired us up for that season. So to have that cut short and like the expectations we had for last season, I mean, we're just, we're bringing those expectations into this season. So I would say that definitely last season being cut short, definitely amped up the energy for this season. And being able to be together more is with, you know, being a practice at Elliott and everything, does that help with the team chemistry? Absolutely. I mean, like, like Chris was saying, just, just being outside, being in that baseball environment more like b being inside, like it, yeah, you can do a lot, but like, you can't mimic baseball like activity at, like you can on a field. And for how much we've been on a field this winter, it's definitely helped our chemistry a ton. And just one more, I assume you probably face Ben and, and workouts and everything. What's that like facing him? Oh my gosh. Well, I always have to face him at eight or nine in the morning. Like, 30 minutes after waking up, like just with an energy drink popped and minimal food. So it is, it is the worst experience I've had to face this fall and this, this winter. I mean, he probably has struck me out 10 of the last 12 at bats and it makes me so mad. I would, I would love to face the kid on a Friday night. Like you're supposed to, I want to face him at six o'clock under the nights. Energy's up. Tensions are high, but no fa facing him. It's, it's really tough, and I'm, I'm really glad that I don't have to face him again.
You just do. That's all then. Look at it that way. I agree. I agree. <laughs> but maybe sometime down the road, but I am very happy to have to face him again this year. Thanks. Danny? Uh, yeah, I, I got one for, uh, for Reggie. Um, so you obviously got off to a great start uh, your freshman season, although this, I guess this is technically still your freshman season. But what, what, what do you think that you gained from that you know, month of playing last year that will that, really help you this season? How's it going, Danny? Thank you. Um, I mean, I got to dip my toes in the water. I got to see what it was like to, to play some college baseball, even though it was just – couple of games um i got to get some advice from the from the guys um just see what it was like just playing every weekend um it was just it was it was a lot of fun and having it cut short just makes me want to and everybody else just want to work so much harder to have a really good season this year so yeah and i guess uh, what are your expectations for yourself you know at the plate and even getting on the mound maybe this year um i for me i just try to take care of everything that I possibly can. I don't really, I'm not like a big goal guy for myself. Um, I just like to take care of the things that control. And then, I mean, I just, just have awesome ex expectations for the team. Awesome. Thanks. Maggie. Yeah, this is for Chris, you know, coming back this year after having what happened last year, why come back? You know, why do yeah, why use this extra year and what makes this year so different knowing that you know eight months ago no one knew if we were gonna if we were gonna have a season hi maggie um when so the the season getting cut short was tragic it's so unfortunate um but then think about if i was gonna come back it was it was easy to it was it ended up being an easy decision just simply weighing the pros and cons um because the pros so outweighed the cons just thinking about, cause I knew, I knew who was coming back. I knew that we had a really good chance to really do something special this year. I knew we were going to be playing in a brand new ballpark. I knew we were going to be practicing every day in a brand new facility. Um, get to play another year with my brother, which is something awesome. Just, just think about those things. It's that there really was no, really no, no choice after thinking about those. Do you have any like personal goals for this season? My personal goal is to make this the longest UConn baseball season ever. That's my personal goal. Uh, Luke? I'm not muted this time. Um, ben, what do you have to, to have for breakfast, and what time do you have to get in the morning to strike out the uh, preseason player of the year, Kyler Fedko, every, um, day, every week? Yeah, it was – it was, it was an interesting fall just because, I mean, there's going to be very few times, I think, just a lot, like down the road throwing at 9 a.m. So, you know, being comfortable at that time, I think, you know, makes things a little bit easier when the season starts and we're playing at, you know, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock or, or 6 p.m. But um, for me, I was waking up on Saturday morning at like between like 5.30 and 6 um, and in the training room by like 6.45 just getting, you know, getting my body ready and um, – I don't know, usually I don't eat, I don't eat that much before games. So usually just a protein shake, a water, maybe a banana, but, um, yeah, no, just getting the, my body going early in the morning and, you know, making nine o'clock feel like a 12 o'clock start was big for me. Um, and just, you know, just staying ready throughout the week. Like I said, just to give myself the best chance to, you know, feel good and do everything I can to help the team win. This one's for Pat. So, over two years ago, when you decided to attend UConn, did you ever think that you would get a uh, almost three whole seasons playing with your brother? No, I I didn't I didn't think that at all. Um, you know, we were hoping to get at least two, just like we did in high school. Um, and then you know, certain events happened, COVID cutting the season short. Uh, my injury kind of took one away, but uh, you know, we're super fortunate to to have him back for another year. And I think you know. It certainly helps me stay focused and, and stay kind of prepared, but, you know, it helps the team a whole lot more. Um, so, you know, selfishly, I'm glad he's back, but I know the team is going to benefit, you know, tremendously from him being back as well. Danny? Uh, yeah, actually, also for Pat, I, I guess you're one of the few people to actually maybe benefit a little bit from the season getting, you know, cut off last year. You know, you had a chance to fully recover. You didn't really have to miss – you know, much time, I guess, how are you, 
how are you feeling now? Uh, and what are your expectations uh, for this season? Uh, feeling really good. Uh, my rehab is completely done. Finished that in the fall. Uh, was really happy with how that went. Um, you know, it was. It's great to have the the medical staff that we have at school, um, from the trainers to the physical therapists. You know, everyone was fantastic, and uh, you know, really gave me the tools to to get where I needed to be as quick as possible. Um, and I guess just kind of building off of you know where I was freshman year and helping the team as much as possible. Um, you know, I think we have something really special this year and, and, and being able to be back in the lineup to help is, uh, you know, a dream come true. I'm ex extremely excited to be back. And, um, you know, I think we're going to do a really good things. Gavin, did you have another? Yes. For Caleb, is he there? Yeah. How you doing, Gavin? Yeah, pretty good. Can you just talk about the depth of the pitching staff and what excites you the most about it? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we just got a guy that can do everything, it seems. Um, you know, we got guys out of the pen who can throw hard, who throw maybe less hard, but still hard. Uh, we got guys with arm side run and great sliders and great breaking balls and change ups. Um, and I just think like every guy does something just a little bit better than the other guy does. Um, you know, just in, in terms of uh, attacking hitters inside, uh, continually filling up the strike zone. We just have so many guys who do that and um, who are able to come with their off speed and, and throw for strikes and throw it in, in behind counts. Um, it just makes us lethal. Um, and uh, obviously we've talked about the bullpen a little bit, but even just beyond myself and, and the other guys in this call, like we have just – guys on guys on guys who are going to get innings for us and get, get huge outs for us. Um, so in, in terms of that, like we, we know what our bullpen has done in the past and, and how that's led to some of our success. Um, and because of that, I'm just that much more excited about this year, knowing the depth that we have in our bullpen. Now how's the new facility and field kind of help the pitchers kind of make good progress heading into the season? Yeah. I mean, there's something about, um, you know, pushing off a turf, fake mound versus a real mound uh that's fixed into the ground and you got grandstands behind it you know it's it's not the same um when you're indoors and you've got a, a 10 foot wide 65 foot long tunnel with surrounded by nets and it's just you and a hitter um it doesn't feel quite the same as when you got uh seven other guys behind you and um grandstands grandstands behind the batter it's it's just it's a totally different feel um, and being able to have those facilities this year and being out there and having as game like situations as possible, um, not even just the view, but then you've got, you know, base runners, you've got guys working on holding guys on working on, um, you know, systems and looks and all these different things um, that you wouldn't have necessarily inside or is, is incredibly difficult to mimic inside at the very least um, having those facilities just makes it, that much more refined in practice and feel like you, this is real. This is very real. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is for Kyler. You know, um, Chris has been a captain now three seasons, two and a half, three seasons. What makes him such a good captain? And why is that a role that he has gone so often? Hi, Maggie. So the best answer to that is just, he is just so well equipped with like, the knowledge of our program. He has been here for so long. He has everything just down to a T. So it's almost like he's a player, but at the same time, he's like almost like a mentor, like a coach. Like he's so, he's so refined in the knowledge of our program. Like it, it just makes him such, such a veteran and being here for fifth, fifth year. It's just, he's just, he's just a great mentor and, and also a friend too. So you can connect with, with him on that level as a friend and as a mentor too. So I would say that's what makes him a great captain. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Any, any final ones for the players before we, we bring coach in? Uh, Jonesy, I just got one for the Winkles. I wanted to ask you, you guys coming from that great Amity program that uh, actually growing up in New Britain, we have a lot of respect for you guys just find a way to you know, have great years year after year after year when championships seems year after year, that winning pedigree, what does that do for you and your careers in college here at UConn? Uh, I can start off um, on this one, Pat. Uh, I think coming from such an awesome program, such an awesome uh, coach in South Coppola and uh, kind of winning tradition there, 
it it, it kind of sets you up for the way they go about their business is college like right so going through um the amity baseball program gives you a taste of what is going to be expected at the next level and i feel like me and pat when we got here we knew what to expect um and that was that was a big step up i think pat yeah i think going off of what chris said i think that's exactly right um you know it's a very good step before college baseball um the coaches kind of understand what's going to be asked of you and tailor the program to mimic that the best that they can, uh, whether that be lifting as a team throughout the off season, uh, the way they run practices is very professional, breaking up into different positions and doing position specific work and then coming together at the end to do kind of team reps. Um, I got on campus here and I'm sure Chris can say the same thing and realize one, the workouts were pretty similar, a little more basic, but a lot of the movements were the same and the emphasis were the same, uh, but also to the way that practice, practices were run were, were, were pretty similar. Um, so yeah, it gave a really good taste. And I, I think, um, you know, just really got us both prepared. Thank you. Luke, do you have a player? Or are you raising for coach? You're on mute. Just one last one for a player. Uh, Reggie, you, we always hear a lot about competition between pitchers and uh, the hitters in practice and fall ball. How big is competition between hitters for those lineup spots? Or does everyone kind of kind of know their role, or is there a lot of heated competition between them? What's uh, how's that like? How's it going, Luke? Um, I would say there's a ton of com- competition. I mean, our lineup is just filled with competitors. Um, we love to compete, and with the depth this year, I mean, everybody's fighting for a spot. I, I wouldn't say anything set yet, but um, it just makes everyone want to work so much harder since there is so much depth. And since everyone just wants to compete with one another to make one another better. You've had an extra year. You might still be a freshman, but you're not a, not really a a rookie anymore. So what do you think you can show everyone this year out of your bag that, uh, that you kind of, you might've held back last year. Um, this off season, I would say I was working on, bring some more power into the games. Uh, last year, I was just trying to get my average up, hit the ball well, and um, I'm trying to implement, like, hitting with some power as well this year. You worked on season specifically to get that power up? Just getting stronger and um, just trying to take advantage of some pitches that I could really drive. <laughs>